The theory of supply and demand underpins traditional economics. In simple terms, the theory suggests that supply drives prices down, whilst demand drives prices up. Equally, it suggests that as prices increase, demand tends to decrease, and as prices fall, demand tends to increase. But is this always the case? Consider these three examples. Firstly, women paying a significant premium, as indeed they do, for a shaver that is no different to one sold much more cheaply to men, except that it is pink instead of black. Secondly, fuel prices in New York increasing by over 100% after 9-11 on the perception that there was a shortage when in fact supplies were plentiful and it was demand that was in decline. And thirdly, Procter & Gamble selling more units of one of its leading skincare products at $18.99 than at either $15.99 or $12.99. These are just three of the many examples in the marketing literature where supply and demand theory falls down. Traditional economists might respond by suggesting that the theory of supply and demand also requires perfect information being available to all parties. And it's reasonable to suggest that in the three examples just cited, this is not the case. Behavioral economics, or behavioral economists at least, will suggest that the theory of supply and demand is predicated on decision-making being rational, when in fact, consumers, indeed human beings, are rarely, if ever, rational. Both the traditional economists and the behavioural economists are in this instant right. The information available to consumers is rarely complete, and very few purchase decisions are entirely rational. Purchases of the Procter & Gamble skincare product don't know what the product costs to make or what it's actually worth. Further, they are buying a brand that has value outside of the product, a value driven entirely by emotion. They don't even know if the product works. It is folly to base pricing strategies on intuition informed by the theory of supply and demand. It is simply not necessarily the case that lower prices will increase demand and higher prices will reduce demand, as indeed Procter & Gamble found. Price is simply more complex than this. In addition to the point of comparison when judging the value of a product, price is also a tool for or a factor in creating the perception of value. A famous Sanford University study tested the same wine and found that there was greater demand at $45 than at $5, and for a second wine, that there was greater demand at $90 than at $10. In this case, price was being used by consumers as a measure of value or a driver of the perception of value. The fact is, price can drive the perception of value up or down, and thus increase demand irrespective of supply. For more on this subject, visit www.djohncarlsonesq.com. That's www.djohncarlsonesq.com.